Hello, you are watching the first Lion Mountain Studio video tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be a basic introduction to the program Ableton Live, which we will be using to produce our own beats and recording instruments or vocals. So today we're just going to basically become familiar with the different areas of the screen in the program and then we're going to start to play with the drum loops, stopping them, starting them and mixing them around. Alright, so when you first open up the program Ableton Live, it's going to look a little bit like this. Um, the most important part of the screen that is the place where you're going to be probably using the most and enjoying the most is this general section in the middle here. This is where the music gets created and, and triggered and mixed and manipulated and this as an analogy it's kind of like a stage for all of your instruments to play on as well as a mixing desk to make them all sound good together all in one. And the window to the left here um, is really great as well. That's a kind of a, a browser or a searching window. So to use that earlier analogy, this is where we find the instruments uh, to put on the stage. Um, we can find stuff here like um, everything we need to build beats and great melody lines. So we've got drum machines here and we've got down here in, a, in another little folder in the in the finder there's samples that we put into the drum machines to play um, back up the top there's the synthesizers so that's for the bass lines and the metal melody lines and then there's all your audio effects like reverb and delay you can put on put on anything you like really um, compression for vocals uh, so that's kind of all the tools you're going to need so later on we're going to learn how to actually navigate through all of these things I've been opening and closing. Uh, today we're just going to open up something that's already prepared so we can get stuck right into it. So to do that I'm just going to go to file and then open and choose this file here, the first tutorial. Now the window to the right isn't really useful to us at the moment. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close it here like that. Unless you're following along to the to the lessons. It kind of takes up a bit of space and I kinda want my music area to be a bit bigger like this, so I just close that. We're gonna um reopen that maybe sometime down the track when it's useful again to us when we'll start to manage files, etc. But for the moment we can just forget about that. Okay, so here we have our session file and it just looks like lots of little coloured boxes. Each box, as you can see as I'm clicking here, each box contains an audio sample that I've created. So I can just give them a little play at the moment so you can see how it works. Notice that I'm triggering them to start playing by pressing on the little triangle there to the left of each box. That's the play symbol. And I can stop them by pressing one of the squares. That's the stop symbol. So I can stop them by pressing on any one of the squares, either above or below the clip that's playing. So just to show you that, I'll press play on one and then just search for one of the squares below that one to stop it. And make sure when you're doing the starting and stopping that you have the mouse pointer exactly on the triangle or the square or it won't actually work. See that I'm pressing on another little part of the box but it's it's got to be right on that shape in order to to launch the sample or to stop it. Another thing um, to notice is that I can play as many as I like in this horizontal line here. 
but I can only play one sample at a time in this vertical line. As soon as I press another another sample in the vertical line it stops the previous one above or below it. So these vertical lines we call tracks. So you can make as many or as little tracks as you want in any in any session. And they'll they'll generally kind of you know be set out something similar like this. One track for drums, one for bass, another one for a kind of lead instrument and then you might have another track for vocals and then backup vocals etc. It means you can kind of uh, set the levels on them independently like all the drums are controlled by one fader that's down here and then the next track is controlled by another fader so you might want to bring the bring the bass up a little louder or turn the bass down a little bit that's all controlled down there. So um so you can play all the tracks at once, but you can only play one sample per track at the same time. So the proper word for the samples that we've got playing here is a clip. So each little coloured square here is called a clip. As I click on each of the clips there with my mouse, um, this window below shows us a lot of information about the clip. It can um, show us what the waveform looks like, and how, how long it goes for until it loops, um, a lot of other stuff as well. And we'll be using this detailed view a lot more in the future to, to improve and change our own samples. But for now, it's enough to know that the pictures that come up in that window below refer to whatever clip that you've clicked on. That is, whatever clip you've highlighted in the area above. There are still a couple of areas of the screen that we haven't looked at yet. This window here, down on the left, that's really the best part, I reckon. This is an info window. So whenever you don't know what something does, you can just move your mouse over that thing and the little window will explain to you some info or some information about what it does. So I'm just going to um, do an example for that. Let's have a look at these things up here. It says one audio. This is called the track title bar. Click here to select this track. Double click to view the tracks devices in the track view. Choose delete from the edit menu to delete the track and choose rename from the edit menu to change the track's name. So I'm going to rename it actually. Edit rename. Okay, I'm going to call that drums because that's actually what's going on. That track has drums inside it and now it's called drums, which is great. I can even rename all my others if I want. Anyway, so that window is um is pretty handy. It's a really good way to start independently learning the program after you've got a bit of a kickstart. And here's a little tip from me. Uh, there's a whole bunch of shortcuts that you can do in this program with the keyboard. Um, we're only going to learn one today just because it's come up. Um, if I want to rename a, a track title or anything else, I'll just click on it and then I'll press Apple R. So that's on a Mac. If you've got a PC, I think that would be Control R. So you've got to hold down Apple and then you've got to press R and then you release it and then you'll be able to type in it. So I know how to press play and stop on these single samples and I'm having lots of fun but sometimes I want to make a couple of samples start or stop at the same time like I want the drums and bass to just kick in like exactly the same time and um, I can't do that with one mouse and one hand so this is where the area on the right comes in handy that's the master track if you like and when I press um, this play button, this triangle button here, all of the samples stored in that horizontal line see the horizontal lines another color they all start to play at the same time let's go so that's a way of kind of um, of pressing play and stop on multiple things. That's called 
launching scenes. These these horizontal lines are, are, are all called scenes. So now we've got tracks in this vertical line and in this horizontal line here, these are called scenes. We can play scene one and scene two and scene three and to, to stop all of the clips at once we just press the square down the bottom there. It even says stop clips. So a good way to use this is to kind of move the samples around in the tracks so that they're organized around the scenes in the right. For example, at the moment I'm just testing out a few different combinations and working out what sounds good together. And when I find a few that sound good together, I keep them there in a horizontal scene. So to move these clips around, I'm dragging and dropping them into their new positions. I'll just click on them and hold the mouse clicker down while I move the mouse so the clip is in its new position and then I release the mouse. And that's called dragging and dropping and it's a really useful computer technique that we'll also be using a lot in this program. So I really like this combination, this scene here, that's going to stay. I'm going to name it here using the Apple R or Control R command and I'll just name it Cool Time. Okay, great. I love it. But next time I want to use beats that I've actually made myself. So what do I do? Find out in the next Line Mountain video tutorial where we're going to be learning how to make our own beats into clips to play around with.